Howdy, folks. Which Wallace from BeatCoffee.com here. Back again for another Way Home review. Uh, here's how it works for the uninitiated. I have just left the cinema. It's that over there. And uh, I've seen a film. And I'm going to tell you about that film on my way home. Hi there. And uh, on this lovely Wednesday, we're here to talk about The Adventures of Tintin. Okay, so, uh, Adventure Tintin. So the shot is this. Tintin is apparently a, um, uh, a young reporter. Very boyish in that, in that sense that, like, you know how only when you got older did you, if you read, like, the Hardy Boys and stuff like that, that you go, wow, they ran around on their own with no supervision a lot. Well, apparently they, uh, you know, in this universe let you, if you're like 12, run around and fight bad guys and report the news. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. He just seems very, very young. So I don't know how young he's supposed to be. I'm not familiar with the character. More on that in a second. But anyway, so he is this, you know, famous reporter type guy uh, who's broken a lot of stories. And oh, there we go. And um, uh, stumbles across another mystery. The mystery of this uh, model ship that he finds that has a secret. And uh, apparently he clues into the fact that there's a secret because there's all these people that want something to do with this ship. This middle ship, but yay big. And uh, they want it. Especially this one evil looking character. And we know he's evil because he's got those, what do they call them? Prince Ned's glasses or they are, and a cane. That means evil. So he, uh, so, so basically, Tintin decides to get to the bottom of it, and all manner of hijinks ensue. Which is a pretty decent synopsis without giving anything away. Uh, I actually just told you more than the trailers did, really. Uh, but not to excess. Anyway, so the point being is that um, you've got this movie, which is based on a, uh, a comic, basically, comic strip set up. Uh, that's quite famous worldwide. Tintin is a big deal pretty much everywhere but here. And as, you know, if you've been listening to the Weekend Justice podcast, it's a big deal to a lot of people here, too. Uh, he is known. So, big enough that you've got, you know, Steven Spielberg directing with Peter Jackson producing, and then they're going to swap on the second film, and you've got, uh, you know, an all-star cast doing mocap to create this thing. So, um, okay, first up, so, so first up, let's talk about good things. The good thing is this, apparently, uh, apparently, why do you have to turn around so I can see it? That's distracting. <laughs> so what are you doing? Oh, she's, so I can lean she's flipped, <laughs> she's flipped the viewfinder around and suddenly I turn around and I'm looking at a miniature version of myself, which is, <laughs> Is You're alarming. Like a dog passing like, what Thank you. The? Thank you for That's comparing me. me to a dog. Good God. Anyway. Or a baby. Yeah, you're distract. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, distracting me. So anyway, <laughs> the hell was I saying? Oh, good things. So the good thing is this. Number one, I just like to say that it appears that you have to go animated for Spielberg to direct like he's Spielberg, which is weird, but. There's some great cinematic Spielbergian moments in this that you just go, wow, where was all this in that crap Indiana Jones movie you made, huh? So, I don't know. So, this is probably one of Spielberg's better, film of re better films of recent years uh, because he does, I don't know, if, if he feels just, like, liberated to cut loose and get crazy because it's animated, I have no idea. But that's good. Um, the voices are good. Jamie Bell's good as Tintin. Um, but, uh, but you've got an unrecognizable Daniel Craig as, as the heavy. And you've got Andy Serkis, who's, well, he's always unrecognizable because he's Andy Serkis. Um, but he is fantastic as Captain Haddock. Um, and, and you've got other fun stuff in there like uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Can I, can I just say, Simon Pegg 
because I know you watch these. You're going to have a great weekend this weekend because between this and Mission Impossible, you're probably going to be the biggest box office star of the weekend. How cool is that? So anyway, um, uh, so you've got Nick Frost, Simon Pegg. They're fun. So you got some great voices in there, okay? Uh, so that's good. Um, you've got some great action sequences, and you've got a great kind of climactic battle thing that I don't even want to talk about because I don't want to ruin it, but you just, you have that feeling of once you see that it's on, you're just like, oh, it's on. I mean, so that's cool. Um, the animation, as we sort of veer towards thing, oh, let me just say, John Williams' musical score just underscoring the fact that, that, you know, Spielberg is back, and it's very Spielbergian score, very adventuresome score, so that's really cool. Uh, and it looks really nice. Just in general, it looks really good. Uh, moving towards the not quite so good, um, the animation style, okay? Much has been made of the fact that we've gone from the Tin Tin, who is kind of, you know, less defined, a little bit more cartoony, to this fully rendered CG, trying to be real human Tin Tin. And of all the animations going on, He's the one I had the most problem with, and the reason I think that is because he's the one they've tried to make the most human. If you look at Haddock, if you look, if you look pretty much across the board, everyone else has, you know, bigger cheeks, bigger noses, bigger ears, beards, something that just basically distorts the face enough to where I think my brain, because I would never want to speak for everybody's brain because my brain's screwed up, but my brain just goes, oh, that's fine, you're fine. Uh, but 1010, there was a little bit of uncanny valley going on there every time he hit the screen, which was frankly not so distracting that it took me out of the movie, but it was kind of an undercurrent of creepiness. Um, so that was not great. Um, the other, so the, but the other big problem that I had was <coughs> that the film took forever to get started because they didn't really start. They kind of made the assumption, and I understand why, because they're doing this for the world. This, this, is a, this is a world, global movie market now. Everybody else knows Tin Tin. They don't need an introduction to Tin Tin. It's like, oh, it's Tin Tin. Yay. It's like, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of another character that I would compare it to. But imagine whatever character that's so ingrained in whatever thing you come from that you just recognize them by silhouette. And you just go, oh, yes, of course, I need no origin story. Thank you. Um, but they just sort of drop you in. And the only idea that you get that Tintin is Tintin is that one character says, by the way, that's not just Tintin, that's Tintin. He doesn't say it, that's not the line, but I'm just, that's, I'm putting across the, the, the meaning of it. Um, and there's a bunch of, like, stuff on his walls that are obviously references to other adventures that he's had, which I'm sure are going to mean something to people who've read the books. And in fact, there's a great cameo at the beginning for people who've read the books. I don't want to talk about it anymore because I don't want to spoil it. But there's, I, I'm sure there's a ton of Easter eggs in there, just like there's a bunch of Spiel, Spielberg in Easter eggs as well. But I, I felt like I didn't, I didn't care. I mean, like, okay, you're Tintin. That's great. Uh, what does that mean to me, the consumer? I mean, I have no idea. I actually was more interested in Snowy, the dog because I was like, oh, cute, a dog. So I can, so I, the rest of the world acts like Tintin is the dog because we all look at a dog and we don't need an origin story for a dog. It's a cute dog, right? So we immediately latch into what's going on with the dog. I was like, I would like the snowy adventures now, please, because I am bored. However, that all changes when you get Andy Serkis as Captain Haddock. I mean, honestly, it's, it's eerie. The moment Haddock shows up, the film comes to life. Fun things start happening. The plot starts moving. Action starts happening. It's like it's it's like you know people were giving me a hard time on solve this because I, it's but it's true obviously that putting a haddock into things makes it more fun, uh, certifiable. So anyway, uh, so part of that I understand that part of that is Andy Circus because Andy Circus is phenomenal. I mean the only problem about if you go. There is a, um, oh crap, 
if you look look on his IMDb, people know how to work these things. If you look on his IMDb, he, he's done some live action work, but one that's really good was where he did, he was Vincent Van Gogh. Um, and uh, yes, I know that the Doctor Who one is really good, but if you wanted to see Andy Serkis acting his ass off, go find that. And it's him. I mean, it's actually him in the flesh. But part of the problem is because Smokecap, most people I don't think appreciate just how good he is. So part of that is just he shows up and the thing kicks off. Part of that, I'm convinced, is that because if you look at the screenplay writers that you've got, you've got, you've got Cornish who did Attack the Block, which was hellaciously fun. You've got Egg, Edgar Wright who did Shaun of the Dead, okay? So we know he can write his ass off. And we've got um, Stephen Moffat who did Doctor Who. So it's not like you're missing, you're not firing blanks from the, from the writing department. I'm wondering if perhaps they edited a bunch of stuff out of, like, what felt like the first half hour of the film um, in order to get going. If it was going to be like a two-hour film or a two-and-a-half-hour film or something, um, and they just edited it down, and maybe that's what's missing, because these, those three, they're not fools. I mean, they're not going to... I don't see them making the mistake that they did writing-wise. I'm thinking it's editing-wise. That's what I'm trying to say, but I'm taking way too long to say it. Um, but that's, that was part of my problem, is it, once it, it took forever to get started, and once it did get started and fun started happening, then there was fun. But until that, there was just nothing. I mean, I was just bored, and I didn't care. And in fact, part of the thing was, throughout the movie, it felt more like the Captain Haddock adventures to me than Tintin, because I just didn't care. Okay, you're the kid, let's get back to the interesting characters like, you know, the drunk who blows things up and stuff like that. I'm like, yes, I'm good with that. So, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, <clears throat> it's, if you are a kid, you're not going to care. You're going to enjoy it once it gets started. Because um, we saw a matinee full of kids. I thought they were having a good time. I don't know. Uh, but they'll probably enjoy it. I think most people who want a Spielberg film and haven't been getting it will enjoy it. Um, you know, as far as the 3D goes, I mean, it was good. Uh, it wasn't uh, It wasn't blow me away good. And part of the problem with that is <laughs> I've seen Hugo. So, I mean, it's... Uh, I, would, I was going to say... Excuse me. I was going to say if... Um, you know, if you want, if you want to see a 3D film, if if you're concerned about 3D or not, I mean, it is animated, so usually 3D works for that. Uh, but I don't know. I would need to go back and watch it again in 2D to tell you for certain. But the 3D didn't blow me away. Um, but it was competent. It was good. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. I did enjoy myself once I got going, and uh, I thought it was okay. Um, but, oh, I'm sorry, it's Commissioner Gordon. Go away. Uh, go, go away, I'm going to see you in Tinker Tailor soon. Anyway, um, what was I saying? There's so many distractions this episode, I don't know what's happening. Uh, no, what I was saying was, is that uh, basically, uh, if you want to go see it, catch a matinee, uh, and you'll probably enjoy it. Um, it's not a bad film, it's just an okay film. If you're looking at, if you didn't get the chance to see Mission Impossible in IMAX, honestly, that's going wide this weekend, I'd tell you to go see Mission Impossible, frankly. Because Simon Pegg's going to get paid either way, so really it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that's it, Adventures of Tintin. 10. Um, what's going to be interesting, this last bit, and then I'll just shut up, uh, what's going to be interesting is to see what happens with the Best Animated Film category, uh, because last time I checked, they hadn't ruined it and put 10 nominations in it. Um, so this will obviously be up because of all the star power behind it, but we'll see We'll see what happens. Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, Cup-wise, I would say... Cup-wise, I'm thinking between three and three and a half. And I'm leaning towards three and a half just because uh, of Andy Serkis, frankly, and Daniel Craig. Uh, because they're they're having way too much fun, and it's it's infectious once it gets going. 
So I don't want to. I don't want to penalize everything just because the, the first part of it took forever. So so there you go. I would say matinee if you must, uh, and like I said, you'll probably enjoy it. So there you go. There's another way Homer uh, in the can. I don't know if we'll get another one done before we hit to Christmas. So if I don't talk to you before then, have a lovely whatever holiday you want or lack of holiday or pretend it's a holiday. I don't believe in it either. I just find it's an excuse to party and give people things. So, uh, so, so yeah. Uh, so, uh, if, now I will say this, uh, one last time, if you are doing any last minute shopping, uh, for God's sake, don't get out on this traffic. Do you see this traffic? Do you see this traffic I'm in? Use me as a cautionary tale. If you go to needcoffee.com slash Amazon, buy this stuff online, and then you'll avoid all this nonsense. And we get kickbacks, so and it helps pay for things like, uh, you know, the tickets and the car and everything else that we use. So, uh, there you go. Until next time, uh, we'll probably get some in before uh, New Year at least. We'll see. Uh, I'll talk to you then. Bye.